sky up that way. Where I am right now, uh, a little bit of rain. <laughs> yeah. There's the Halifax Harbor. You know, I'm going to talk about, of course, camping. Uh, McNabb's Island, right about, well, that island right there. Sorry, my f wants to focus on my finger, but that might be an alright place to camp. <laughs> uh, uh, even down through there, you know, if you can tuck yourself in nicely enough uh, just after dark, why not? <laughs> Lots of place to camp. Even out there, that little peninsula. <laughs> you never know, you can kind of slip in there at the right time and camp it out. Hi, this is me. Hello. Uh, I do have my raincoat on. <laughs> but, yeah, there's lots of good places to camp if you want to really look for them. Um, I'm going to show you the worst place to camp, and I'm going to tell you why. I mean, this, this place... Uh, uh, yeah, you camp there in time, it could be life threatening. So, I'm going to show you where that is. Um, it's right now. This is the worst place to camp. In a tent? No. More like in your own apartment. By and far, this is the worst place to camp. And I'm going to tell you why. Camping saved my life. It did. Uh, when I think about it, uh, yeah, it did. Previous to me camping, which I did very little throughout my life, um, so I'm going to say a specific time frame. Um, that would be, well, uh, 2005. Oh, I think I just turned. 34, I uh, had a bad back, bad shoulder, um, ear problem, uh, two, three, uh, what else? <laughs> uh, ooh, the fact that, oh, lung problems. The lung problems are the thing that scared me the most. A car would drive by and I would have a hard time breathing just from the exhaust. The worst the exhaust of the car, the worse it would be for me. Now, periodically, at least once a month, I was put this this vapor to breathe in, uh, Ventolin to open up things and uh, make me breathe, help me breathe. It, it, sometimes it was pretty bad. Um, yeah, <laughs> I wanted to myself if I'd lived to be 50. You know, um, <laughs> so I think of so many other like just issues and issues. Um, I also had a lot of allergies that, that was developing. Yeah, like I'd always my eye would start burning and burning, and you know, I when when the allergies were around, oh, so bad that one day it felt like I was pepper sprayed going to work by something, and oh, my eyes started burning. Uh, my in my sinuses they started swelling up uh, the gross stuff trying to form mucus and uh, got into my lungs I was having a hard time breathing I was oh maybe five seven blocks away from work and by the time I got to work they had to get me to the hospital where I spent three hours in emergency on a heart monitor <sighs> yeah it was terrible my health was going down and I had to do something radical um, <laughs> after I put my back out for I don't know how many times that was I really said to myself um, you know you, you got to do something <laughs> if you're gonna die 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 doing something you want to do so I want to well go across Canada by foot dream of mine since I lay in a hospital bed when I was a kid when I was struck by a car and almost lost my leg. Um, camping saved my life. <laughs> I can say that right now. It's been years. The health issues that I had prior to trying to do a walk across Canada were, um, were not good and they weren't. I knew it. 
uh, it wasn't my intent to go out there and expect that my allergies would disappear. Now, again, I had a puffer that the doctors gave me with me. <laughs> I think in a little blue pouch. Uh, so I knew where to get it. Uh, that's where my EpiPen was. So I could fire that into my thigh if I was having a bad allergic reaction in a tent, in the wilderness, away from everybody, in the middle of the night. You don't know. Um, and I'll tell you, having done the walk across Canada, sometimes the car wouldn't go by for 45 minutes. 45 minutes of having an allergic reaction could be the death of you. I never used it out there. Five years went by, I never used it. The puffer, that disappeared. <laughs> I never used it. Never needed to be uh, prescribed one after my trip across Canada. Um, five years go by and here I am with this little wicker basket at a first aid uh, class. He wanted to show us how to use this stuff in case you ever had to help somebody assist them in using it when they're having an allergic reaction. And I looked at the wicker basket and went, oh, I seriously never used any of this for the past five years. Why? What happened? <laughs> There's science behind this. I'm going to list it, a little bit of the information, flash it on the screen. Uh, but I'm not going to tell you what the scientists discovered. I'm going to tell you what I discovered. Um, <laughs> little saying I have, I'll give you some <laughs> Rose Squal <laughs> Rose Squalor, <laughs> Rose Scholar quote here. Discovering what makes you important will be your most important discovery. Prior to my journey across Canada, I came up with a theme. Every step that's taken is a step towards a cure. And that was really emphasizing towards a cure for cancer, preventing cancer. Um, I don't even hear a rumble in the background, but it looks like somebody's washing the washing machine. <laughs> I'd rather hear birds. But anyways, back to whatever I was talking about here. <laughs> but every step that's taken is a step towards a cure. Um, it, that was my theme expecting my actions to lead towards a cure for somebody else. Uh, I figure if you can prevent cancer, you have a cure. It's that old saying, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. So if you can prevent it, <laughs> you've got the cure, right? Makes sense. Um, you know, everybody's looking for the magic pill. You know, pop a pill and you know, it goes away. But what if the magic pill is just preventing it for that individual? <laughs> I had allergies. <laughs> they developed. They, they say, well, now, as a kid, you can get allergies. Some, kid, some children have allergies, and it goes away by the time they become an adult. Uh, I've also, people also said back then, as an adult, you know, knowing my allergies, 35-year-old person, 34, 35 years old, with those allergies, uh, it wasn't expected that they'll go away. Allergies in an adult, they expect, carry on through a lifetime. Um, <laughs> long story short, those allergies disappeared. Um, why? Why? It puzzled me. <laughs> I also felt switches get turned on and turned off. Epigenetics is the word now. Back then, um, I didn't know what that was. I call it genetic memory. I felt in my body through, um, well, this was my routine. Uh, wake up in the morning, have something to eat, and uh, take my camp, crumple it all up into uh, <laughs> my you know, stroller or trailer, stuff it in there. Uh, the stuff that you needed for the day, keep it out. Uh, you know, a, a flash Newfoundland, because Newfoundland certainly consistently uh, 45 kilometers a day on average. And at the end of that day, it's set up a tent, um, camp there, if, of course, eat first, camp there for the night, uh, and then repeat. <laughs> um, break down camp, walk 45 kilometers, set up camp, 
sleep, repeat, repeat, repeat. Um, but what was going on? <laughs> I didn't have any allergies. Um, I got back, it went away. Uh, the shoulder didn't bother me. Uh, my ear issue, it went away. Um, <laughs> I wasn't stuck spraying things up my nose and inhaling things and injecting things. What the hell was happening there? <laughs> Camp and saved my life. <laughs> um, now, between British Columbia and Nova Scotia and Newfoundland, uh, BC, Alberta, Manitoba, uh, Ontario, Quebec, New Brunswick, Prince Edward Island, Nova Scotia, Newfoundland. <laughs> Let me talk about the big animals out there. <laughs> Grizzly bears at BC, Alberta. Uh, pronghorns, uh, Alberta, Saskatchewan, Manitoba. Uh, <laughs> Manitoba. <laughs> Very dogs. Funny thing. Biking along, all of a sudden here's <laughs> like, what was that? You see them running. Uh, Ontario, uh, wolves. Uh, you see it's the red wolves, you know. Uh, <laughs> Quebec, uh, hey, Canadian geese, gotcha. Uh, <laughs> you know, New Brunswick, porcupines. You might start seeing raccoons uh, that I have in Nova Scotia here. Uh, <laughs> PEI. Potatoes. <laughs> Don't got any animals, just potatoes over there. Um, <laughs> I'm kidding, PEI. And uh, of course, Newfoundland has a moose. That's the big stuff out there. <laughs> Did they save my life? No, some of them, as a discussion, you can imagine, could take my life. But the war creatures that I strongly believe got me out of the allergy problem. Uh, as well as that exercise. Exercise, eating right, changing my inner workings. <laughs> um, the animals that live in my gut, I, I changed them around. Um, but I also took stuff into my gut that I normally wouldn't. In the past, we've had many, many more species living inside of us, a lot more. Um, than we do now because we're exposing ourselves to much, much more. You know, we, <laughs> we're more like living like this in the past. <laughs> Maybe not necessarily tents, but things we've built that are similar to tents, crawling there, shelter for the night. And for the day, we're out foraging, going around the woods or the, the plains or wherever, uh, chasing things down or finding food along the way. Um, what do we do now? <laughs> uh, well, we live in apartments. We wake up in an apartment. We go into a compartment uh, that we call our vehicle. We'll go into a department store <laughs> or grocery store to pick up what we need. Uh, our entertainment, you know, instead of watching an eagle come swooping at your head, uh, <laughs> or a wolverine trying to get underneath your, your tent, uh, for entertainment, <laughs> it's fun, <laughs> it's scary, but it's fun. We go to a theater and we have the surround sound and we're popping popcorn and, and eating our uh, candy, you know, and uh, we weren't developed to do that. And I don't know exactly how healthy we're gonna be as a species um, adapting to that. It's, it's a scary thing. But we've had a, a lot of illnesses that I think are preventable. Um, but yeah, I, I'm gonna say again, I'm gonna say this. <laughs> share, subscribe, subscribe, share. Because there's findings I found along the way and I wanna share them. You know, I want you to subscribe so that you can you can hear it. <laughs> I want you to comment uh, so that I can comment back, maybe give you some information of what I found. But yeah, camping has saved my life. <laughs> but yeah, back to it, you know, like, um, exposing myself to that environment, you know, the cold, the hot, um, it, it 
turned on all of those switches in my body, uh, gave me the proper hormonal responses to those situations that my body recognizes. I do say this, <laughs> I'm going to say that, <laughs> something else, but when your body's revolting, it's time for a revolution. And why is it revolting? <laughs> um, it's not liking what you're doing. Although it's trying its damnedest to do exactly what you're telling it to do, you know, under the circumstances. Um, but if you haven't challenged it and, and trained it, you know, I said in the Weather Network on an interview, and more than other times, but specifically I remember the radio interview, um, a healthy garden, sorry, yeah, well, a healthy garden, yeah, sure. Um, <laughs> growing a garden is the most important thing you can do for a child. And that's introducing them initially in their life to uh, microorganisms that's gonna, their, their immune system's gonna go, hey, what's this? You know, is it okay or is it not? And when the immune system goes, well, it's not really interfering with our function, we're okay with that. And then I've also said to them, a runny-nosed child is a healthy adult. Meaning that's a sign when your kids having having the flu or, or sick. You never want that. It's, it's it's a problem. But introducing to that initially in their youth uh, will produce a stronger immune system and train that immune system how to fight off things that really aren't that healthy for them. Um, you know, it, it can change their lives. Now taking them to the doctors for the sniffles, and we know this, <laughs> the world knows this now. Too much antibacterial. <sighs> you know, I want, a, I want a magic pill, an antibacterial pill. But it's also killing some of the very valuable uh, bacteria in your gut. And it's, it was creating, as they say, the coin superbugs. Um, yeah. You know, and I worry about the, you know, with COVID, it's been two years, two years. You know, we're not exposed. We're being told not to, and, and understandably so. I, I agree to a certain degree. You know, we, we can't go too far. There is a point we, we have to remove the mask. Um, right now, currently in Nova Scotia, we've removed the mask. Uh, thousands of people have COVID now. Um, the hospital stay has reduced the, per population. Um, with it, when I was going across Canada, I shook hands, I hugged people, uh, this is face to face, you know, this far away, um, exposed myself to so much, uh, <laughs> shaking hands, you know, you're, um, is a good thing. <laughs> it's a good thing. Just bump, you know, people afraid of, no, exchange of microorganisms is very powerful in the body. It's going to make your immune system stronger. But, you know, I worry about fighting hard against one pandemic, weakening society's immune system and immune response, and then, you know, uh, getting eaten by the next big thing. Um, people are worried about the, the vaccines. Um, what, it, what it's really just doing is just introducing a foreign body into your immune system to say, hello, <laughs> this is what I look like. It's kind of like, uh, <laughs> you know, you put up a, a photo of a criminal, <laughs> you know, a wanted poster. Um, <laughs> put it, it says, this is what it looks like. <laughs> if you see him or her, right, by and far, it, let us know. We want to come and arrest them. <laughs> and that's what, you know, your immune system, it, it, that's what you're doing. <laughs> you're just really just putting up a photo, in a way, of, of that, that person. Or in this case, the virus. This is what the virus looks like. Um, when it comes into the system, it's dangerous. Please be ready to attack it. Um, you know, the, it takes a while for the immune system to discover what it's this, this this danger this risk you know let's say with COVID uh, by the time it gets into your lungs it starts 
producing, reproducing itself, um, the immune system has to catch up, and it will if you survive. <laughs> if you don't, that's it, game over. So, you know, I don't, I'm not going to say too much more about that. But what I will say is we lost 6 million people due to COVID. Um, 6 million people that weren't exposed to the virus previously. Um, well, maybe some were re-exposed. But, um, you know, really, yeah. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to slide into something else here. The sedentary lifestyle. Yeah. This six million people in two years died of COVID. Six million plus had died of just being sedentary. Um, there's no guarantee, really. Like, how can you tell that camping saved my life? How can you tell that um, you know, exercising and not being sedentary and walking across Canada saved my life? Well, I don't know. But if you look at the stats, you know, the odds, like I wasn't out to break records. And I told people that, oh, you're, you're going this far, you're doing this, you're trying to break a record. I'm not trying to break a record. I'm trying to beat the odds. And I am still alive. And I will say camping saved my life. And I will say exercise saved my life. Um, I feel that because I know how sick I was starting to become. And I will say, say this. Disorder, disorder, or a disorder, or disorder. <laughs> I'm going to inter let them interchange. Disorder creates illness. Illness creates disease. Disease creates death. Disorder creates illness. Illness creates disease. Disease creates death. I was going along that path. Instead, I took a pathway totally different <laughs> across Canada. My pathway was the Trans-Canada Highway. And I went off the path only far enough to set up camp. Uh, but that was a path. It was a healthy path. And for you folks, yeah, to consider exposing yourself to camping and exercise and eating right and all that stuff because it, uh, it can save your life. I, I think I'm going to leave it at that right now. <laughs> of course, if there's anything else I think of, um, I'm going to add it to a future video. And if you like this, like, like away. Um, but uh, I think I'm going to leave it at that. I, I want to keep these briefer. <laughs> Um, and uh, yeah, touch base on a lot of things, but that I really want to go into because I, I really did this week think, you know, did camp and save my life? I, I think it did. Cheers folks. The more you move, the more you move others. And, uh, you know, if this moves you, you know, just get out there and share it, get out there and experience it, uh, get out there and live it with other people. Shake hands, hug, um, <laughs> as long as you're your provincial uh, health minister <laughs> gives you the thumbs up but uh, you know we're not quite through COVID uh, but I uh, you know we sure we sure gave it a good crack so anyways cheers folks <laughs>